So here's something kind of cool. Valifor, Belgamine's Valifor, will use Energy Blast, not Energy Ray. Uh, and this is the hidden one, you remember, from the save? So for many players, seeing something like that would be very curious to them. They'd be like, what the hell? It knows, it knows a totally new overdrive. All right, so there we go. That's Valifor dealt with. There will be heavy cutting here. Um, only because you guys have seen many of these matchups before, you know, we've seen Stop. what playing Pokemon's like. So, uh, I'm just sort of going to blast through what we can. It's going to be five fights, obviously, because we've got five uh, Aeons. You have... Take this. Now, every time she'll compliment you, she gave us four Lightning Gems there, which is great. So, those are the best things we've got. Uh, better than Electro Marvels, stuff like that. And she heals you fully after every battle. The one thing you might like to do is just push Yuna wherever you can on the Sphere Grid, because that's going to boost the Aeons. I'm used to doing this at the very end of the game, where Yuna's a lot stronger, and so the fights are a lot easier, but yeah. Before we do the next fight, I just want to talk about this room a bit. You'll notice um, that many of the high summoners are listed here, uh, so which sort of suggests that actually this only fell into disrepair very, very, very recently. Uh, I've always liked the look of the backgrounds here. One thing that's very different about this temple to all the others is this one has no Cloister of Trials. Or if it does, it's not in use anymore. I think maybe the idea is the Cloister of Trials is that weird network of pathways down below that the Chocobos have, are now using. Maybe. But mechanically, it's probably just that the devs ran out of time. This is one of those things. If you could remake FF10, friggin' uh, put a, a, a Cloister of Trials here. I actually quite enjoy the Cloister of Trials, generally. It seems sad that this one doesn't have one. But here's the uh, room to the Chamber of the Faith. If we try and interact with it, it says the doors are sealed by strange power. So we can't get in there. You need two items to get in there. The Blossom Crown and the Flower Scepter. Now, Belgamine has one of those items. It's very difficult to get from if her. Got what it takes. But you can get it from her. The other of those items, uh, I'm not at liberty to Before discuss. Just yet. Yes. So anyway, that's what we're looking for. Two items to get in there, and then Yuna can pray to some faith and get a new Aeon. Or if those marks on the door are anything to listen to, maybe something better. Alright, well, there's her Ifrit, so we're going to use Shiva. Now, Meteor Strike is typeless. You might think it's fire, but it's typeless, so that's why my Null Blaze didn't defend me from it. But it's fine. Uh, this is my second overdrive, and I've pounded the poop out of him between. There you go, he's dead. You notice that wasn't an overkill, despite doing 9,999 damage? That's because his health is so high, even that amount of a threshold of damage won't overkill him. Uh, if we had got Shiva to break her damage limit, then maybe we could have overkilled him. But uh, we haven't done any of that stuff yet. Ah, you take this. There you go. So 30 X potions there. 30 X potions is really useful. If you have a look on our... Um, uh, what's these? I could have sworn that they were used for customizing something, but apparently no, I'm wrong. But anyway, that's really useful. Shall we see? Yes, please, let's go on. Seeing just the reward for the Ifrit stuff, it must Very mean the Ixion well. fight's good, right? Now, now Ixion's a weird one. Who do you want to fight with? Because Ixion doesn't have um, any... There's no water summon to uh, counter him with. But we do have some summons that can cast water magic, namely Behuma and, and Valifor. And the advantage those guys have is they're not weak to him at the same time. So hopefully their sort of universal coverage will be a nice matchup. Plus, I mean, Christ, he has Water Raga, so... I will point one thing out here in post-commentary that I've just noticed while editing. I actually think it's really clever. They just gave us 30 X potions. You're going to see in a bit that those X potions can be used to teach an Aeon Kuraga. And they give you the 30 X potions right before you have to fight Ixion here who you have no water summon for. So you have to use either Valifor or Behuma, and neither of those guys can heal themselves. Well, what did the game just give you? 30 X potions so that they can heal themselves. I'm pretty sure that's deliberate. It's pretty cool. I never noticed it before. All right, now he's pretty low. So what I'm going to do is one last water Aga here, where basically he's going to run out of MP after this anyway. So we'll do that, and then we will Mega Flare. I'm surprised, actually. These are a little bit more difficult. Much more balanced, actually, than if you do it at the end of the game. So I'm guessing the devs do expect you to come here early. 11k, he's still alive, but I don't mind. There we go, that's Ixion down. Basically, Shiva was getting two turns for his every one, so I would just Blizzara and then defend. So if he ever tried to attack, I'd take no damage, basically. I could have, you know, upped the ante a bit, but then that would have been at more risk to her life. 
Ah, you have Take this. I really think Shiva, because just because she can heal herself so nicely, might be the best uh, candidate for pushing through most of these Aeons. But we have to yeah, fight yeah. Shiva now. Uh, I'll do my best. So we will fight Shiva. And we got 10 Chocobo Feathers there. Was it sh Feathers or Wings? Wings cast haste on the entire party. Feathers cast it on one person. Uh, feathers can be used to get SOS haste. Wings can be used to get auto haste. I'm pretty sure it's not wings because you don't get many wings in the game. Well, look, our Ixion's just been waiting with an overdrive ready this entire time. So we may as well just bring him in to use it. Alright, that's uh, Shiva down. So the only one left is her Behuma. Which I believe is actually a big challenge. The previous one we fought, Isaru's, would just stand there boosting, if you remember. Ah, you take this. So there we get 60 mega potions. Jeez, hold on, let me have a look here. What can we teach Aeons with this stuff? So abilities. Uh, let's go to Behuma. I mean, these, the X potions must have been like Kuraga or something. Uh, mega potions. Look, with 60 of them, we can teach an Aeon Kuraga. That's why we're getting these items. That's the idea. So we could teach our Behuma Kuraga, and that would just make him insanely powerful. We could teach an Aeon Haste with those feathers. Uh, and I believe what I really want to do is teach uh, Shiva Haste here. So, where is it? There we go. Teach Haste. She, Because she's just amazing with Haste. I love her with Haste. Alright, so we've got that. Um... And yeah, there wasn't any regular customize, I don't believe, with Mega Potions. No, there isn't. Okay, that's fine. Alright, we'll move in. Someone is cooking something friggin' delicious, like next door. I have no idea what it is, but it, sounds ama it smells amazing. Alright, boom, here we go. It smells like, you know if you're like on holiday, at like a, uh, like a, a beachfront resort, and they've got like a bar that's out sort of part of the beach, but not quite. But you can go over to that bar and they give you food. It smells a lot like that. Whatever they would be making there. <laughs> it smells like holiday, I guess, is what I'm saying. Alright, Behuma, let's see what you got. We're going to Shiva her up. We're going to haste her. And then she's just, in theory, just going to get way too many turns. Uh, she might run out of MP. Because she doesn't have too much. We could have boosted that a little bit with some uh, Mana Spheres. But I'm pretty confident. Alright, here we go. White Magic. Haste. Shiva. Look, three turns for his one. Okay, so now that that's on there, the great thing about Aeons is as well, there's no like, worry that Haste's going to get stripped. Because like, Aeons won't be dispelling or anything like that. 3k. That's fine. Look at all the turns we're about to get. This is amazing. Look at this, look at this. Our MP's going to get really low. I should probably save my magic for healing myself. There you go, countdown of 5. Fine, whatever. But look, we get 4 attacks here. So, what we can do... Ah, oh, we only try to cheer, not reflex, but that's fine. We'll cheer five times, which is going to buff our defense and our attack like mad. And um, then we will uh, heal ourselves. And he might not do even even do anything. Oh, we can we can cheer six times or five times and then a uh, heal at the end. One more. Man, if only I could have, like, Dark Shiva just looks so cool. Alright, and now we'll heal ourselves with a Blizzard, save a little bit of the MP. There you go, that was more than enough. Alright, countdown four. Okay, here we go. Oh, he's countering, for God's sake. I thought that might happen. Alright, well, we've reduced the damage from the counter. What can we do with a Diamond Dust? He'll counter once and then charge. And he's already in his weak stance. One counter, which we dodged. Beautiful reflex would have been great to have. You can't teach your Aeon's auto abilities, so that is a downside. Got another one. Oh, is he now countering with Im Impulse because we're low? That might bypass Cheer, and that could be bad. Alright, that's fine, we're still alive. Countdown of two. Not concerned. Our overdrive will be up in a second, especially if we dodge this. I guess it's not technically a real counter because we can evade. You can never... Oh, no, you can evade counters. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, one more Diamond Dust. Since he's already clearly in low health, this should kill him. No, it didn't. Damn. Okay, that this could be... But, all right, there's his overdrive. It's up. All right, how many turns do we get? Two. Now, to attack or defend here. To attack or defend. Uh, or heal. I reckon I'm going to have to defend. Hopefully we can survive the Mega Flare. Oh, 
Oh, okay, all right, sweet, okay. We're still alive, Blizzaro on us. And look all the turns we get because he just overdrives. It's fine, back up to max health. Shiva's so cool. And another Diamond Dust. There you go. He looks like he's down and out for the count now. Even in death, he just barely moves, you know, just crashes down a bit. And there we go, that is the last of Belgamino's Aeons. Uh, as I say, lots of cutting here. This would have been a full episode otherwise already by this point, which would have been stupid, so. Yes, we have made much progress. Take this, we get the Flower Scepter. Cool. So, um... You've got quite a name to... Uh, well now, if you say you'll do your best, you'll notice that no more Aeons are on the list. We got the Flower Scepter though, and that is half of what we need to get through this door. So if we walk, give her a wide berth so we don't accidentally talk to her. We come over here. The doors are sealed by a strange power. Oh, and it doesn't do anything. Okay, so I guess we need both before anything will happen. I thought one item broke one seal each time. But right, there you go. So that's uh, that's everything in Remium we can do for now. And sadly, until the end of the game, we're not going to be returning here. But uh, do remember, I think it's a really cool place. Very ambient place. Uh, may as well save. We did get a bunch of stuff there. And uh, we will continue our pilgrimage now, guys. We've seen pretty much everything the Calm Lands have to offer. Uh, so I will walk back out. We'll find a chocobo patiently waiting for us and we will ride it to the north. So here we go. Here's the chocobo. Now we don't have to go all the way back along that bridge we were on earlier. In fact, I don't think it's even an opportunity for you. Nope. So instead we'll just interact with this feather here. And fly over. Uh, Remedy, uh, Remedy, Remium Temple doesn't reappear for the sequel either, by the way, sadly. One of those areas I thought could have had a lot of interesting thing used with it, but it just, uh, it falls to the obscurities and wastes of time, and, uh, you don't get to return there. Alright, so here's the top right corner. And we're not quite, a lot of people will say you're out of the Calm Lands. Now, you're not, really. There's a whole other screen to the Calm Lands, a bunch more items you can get and stuff, but, uh, you know, it's very close to where you can then reach Gagazette, so... It's easy to mistake it, but you will notice we are still in the calm lands. We're just at a place called Near Bridge. So I'm going to save. And uh, come up here. Halt! Summons from Lord Seymour. Come with us. Seymour? We have nothing to discuss with Maester Seymour. Yeah, so out of our way. Lord Seymour's commands must be obeyed. You will come. I warn you. The Maester doesn't need you alive. That Guado doesn't sound like a Guado. At all. But yeah, geez. Seymour's still about then, I guess. Nice to have a bit of confirmation, so I don't have to keep hiding around that fact. And uh, yeah, giant big-ass machina thing. From the Guado. Cheers, boys. This guy is Defender X. Uh, he's one of these weird, hey, let's throw in a boss, yay, kind of, kind of deals. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna re-equip the Brotherhood here. If he's weak to lightning, we'll have our lightning strike stuff on. He's not. Okay, so uh, this boss can be really dangerous. It says made of stone, resistant to physical attacks. Uh, he also has no elemental weakness. So you could try to spam him with magic, or you could um, do the more interesting thing, which is armor break him, and then everyone can do crazy damage. So we will use a chocobo feather on Auron, just to start the hastes coming. What weapon has Auron got there? They seem to have all equipped weird things. That's like his default one, isn't it? Uh, Titus here will delay Buster the boss to see if it works, because I don't remember if it does. No, it does not. But by doing this, the boss will counter-attack. Okay, that wasn't even a counter. That was just his regular ability. So, you saw, though, that uh, Titus didn't do very much damage there. Let's try armor-breaking the boss now. And here's the counter. Blast Punch. What that did was just did half of Auron's current health. Um, and what did we steal from it? I can't remember. 
So we'll go again. Four Lunar Curtains. That's what you steal. You either get... Okay, and then... Yeah, so I think he counters, but he just attacks whoever the hell he likes. So Auron's down. That's not good. Let's... Uh, and you, uh, Riku gets two turns. So we will drop a Phoenix down. And actually, let's not. Yeah, no, let's. That's the smart thing to do. I was considering bringing Yuna in and casting life so that she gets a go. But everyone can get a go in a second. So this guy has a lot of devastatingly powerful attacks. Wow, we get another go. I love how quick Riku is. She's awesome, man. Um... He's got devastatingly powerful attacks, but way back earlier in the series, when we first got Provoke, I told you guys that there was a boss in this game you could cheese the entire thing out with Provoke. Well, this is that boss. Welcome to that, that time. We are, we are finally here. So, we'll press uh, Triangle to defend with Yuna. Tidus survived, thank God. Let's provoke this big-ass boss. So now, whenever we attack him, and he's now armor broken, so we can do actual significant damage. Whenever, uh, Yuna had her turn, didn't she? So we'll move him in, in there. Uh, whenever, whenever he, uh, gets a turn in, instead of using his regular dangerous stuff, all he'll do is Blast Punch Tidus, which can only ever do a percentage of his health, his current health, not his max, his current. So he will forever just do that and never kill Tidus. He'll go down to, like, one health. And the guy will be safe forever, leaving you to wail on the enemy team for as long as you could ever want. So look, Tidus, he didn't even do that much damage that time. This time we're going to mental break the boss, which means Kamari will start hitting harder with his magic as well. It's like armor break, but for magic. We'll also haste Kamari, so he starts getting goes. That's the one thing I don't like about him on Lulu's path. He's barely getting any turns in. So we'll get another Bizarro here. So, fair enough damage, but, you know, the animation time, when it comes to that, it's a question of animation time for me. So, I may as well just swap Wacker back in. Lulu hasn't had a go, I appreciate that. Let's equip him with uh, this scout, which has sensor on it, uh, and strength on it. We'll haste. Uh, Auron doesn't get an extra go, so we'll haste Wacker. It's a shame, because we hasted Auron, and then he immediately died. I mean, how great is that? And then we will just uh, start attacking. I might start cheering with Tidus as well. Not that we ever need the defense. So, like, one skill t changes this from a fairly difficult battle that you can struggle on to a battle impossible to lose. Uh, just as long as you know that one thing about it. So, we'll go with another one here. The guy has 60,000 health, for the record. So, he is a bit of a tough nut to crack. But once you've got everything stabilized, I can just cut this because there's no need to see anything. 48k left. Uh, he is actually weak to darkness as well, by the way. So even if you are struggling with other things, if you want to do it like legit, I guess, you could inflict darkness like that. And he's only done seven damage now. It's brilliant. Just going to quickly bring Lulu in. Give her her, her turn. I should have cast something, but whatever. Uh, for what it's worth as well, this is the only battle in Final Fantasy X where you have this background, where you see the bridge and stuff. You never get any random encounters here. There's never any other bosses here. So this is your only chance to like enjoy a fight with this particular battle scene. And I've always been curious to stuff like that, because this happens a couple of times in the game. When they do this, does it annoy them that they're making a battle that's going to be so, you know, little used? Because obviously they had to completely remodel this area and reuse it and recreate it as a battleground. I just, uh, I'm always curious about that. So there you go, Titus on 4 health. I predict he'll do, what, 2 damage here? There you go. And next turn he'll do 1 damage. And there it is. Now, what will happen after he's at 1 health? Well, we shall see. I'm done cheering as well now, so we're just going to lay the pain on. I probably won't go for the overkill here. Uh, but I think he drops level 3 key spheres. If it's level 4, then it's definitely worth going for an overkill, but I just uh, finished him off. We'll see. A level 2 key spheres, yeah, so I wouldn't worry about it. He doesn't drop any gear either. So there you go, that's it, right? It's a really weird boss fight. There's no dialogue at the end of it. Where did the Guado go? They're just, uh, I guess it's just to let you know, you know, you think you've escaped, you haven't. The pull of Yevon, the pull of Bevel, the maesters in particular. Is still very much there. All right, uh, so now you've got a choice. Do you want to go down or up? Across the bridge. This isn't the way in. That way leads down into the valley. Wow, you know your way around, yeah? Huh? Finally, this is a place where Waka hasn't been, but Lulu has. So, um, oh, what do I want to do here, guys? What do I want to do? 
I want to show you a bit more story, but I also want to show you this big optional thing you can do. So, how about we do this? We cross the bridge to get a cutscene. Or do we go all the way through here? No, there we go. Sometimes Yuna would just stare off into the distance. I finally understood why. She was saying goodbye to the places she'd never see again. Very sad. I don't know why that line always sort of sticks with me. So now, we are at Mount Gagazet, the very bottom of Mount Gagazet is a huge area, by the way. Like, my guide usually can cover a zone in something like two or three pages. Here for Mount Gagazet, it's like seven or eight pages. This is the very bottom of the, of the zone. I don't want to go up there yet, though. Um, as much exciting and cool stuff will happen there. Uh, the gag oh my god. Uh, instead we're gonna come here. We're still in the calm lands just here. This is what I mean by the way. People think the calm lands sort of ends because there's no encounters here or anything. It's just walk up to Gagazet. But this is still technically calm lands and when you come down here into the valley, you're also still in the calm lands. So we will come down. Now this doesn't lead you to the very bottom of the scar we were looking at before. You'll still see the scar is nearby. But it does get you a bit lower. And Lulu has some connection with this place. Uh, you'll get random encounters here, so do be aware of that. There's that save sphere. I'm not going to bother with it. Um, just before we go into a cave that's nearby, uh, one of the... Is it really the first dungeon of the game, I would say? We'll find a bunch of people here. Uh, this person says, This land where Lady Yokan trained is sacred to the Crusaders. Lady Yokan was a member of the Crusaders before becoming a summoner. Now, we heard a little bit about the Crusaders at the Monster Arena. Turns out the Crusaders actually are sort of based here. Do you remember that I told you guys about how there's a Blitzball team called the Yokan Nomads that don't really exist anywhere in FF10? Um, but, like, where might they be from? This could be the place where the Yokan Nomads were, like, like, were supposed to train as a Blitzball team if they were ever implemented in the game. Because this is where Lady Yokan trained. Alright, anyway, so here we're going to go... Do we want to put all breaks on an enemy? Do we want to eject an enemy or just damage all enemies? Let's just damage all enemies. I like Oran's overdrives. They're all kind of balanced. I foolishly, when I was younger, used to just think, oh, you just used the most recent one you unlocked because it's always going to be the best. But it's it's totally situational. Um, so here we will go with Slice and Dice for Titus. It's funny because Wacker was getting crazy overdrive goodness recently, but now it's like really whittled down. Maybe I should put him back onto uh, Warrior instead of Slayer. But if he's the one that scores the kill, for example there, it charges him quite a lot. This guy here, you'll see that poison is a pretty big thing from these guys. These are called Apages. They'll poison you with their regular attacks, as is quite self-evident. Um, but they don't really do much damage beside that. I'm going to pass Aurons here, just so that I can let Wacker get the kill and charge his overdrive. We can try another status reels. Show some more of that off. I'm, I get so enthused by the status reels just because it's something I don't, wouldn't do on a normal playthrough. So up here, you'll find a guy training with a sword. Look at this. He says, Hi, Summoner Yokan. Luck once trained, on the, trained in this land. We Crusaders also intend to train here to challenge sins once again. So yeah, he uh, he was castrated when he was young. But this guy is called Durin. Durin is like... Some people recommend him as a goalie. You'll notice he's got 12 catch. He is demonstrably the worst Blitzball player in the entire game when everyone's at level 99. Most people, when they get to level 99, they've got at least a couple of stats that are like plus 80 or something. So they'll have like maybe 80 shoot or 80 block or 80 injure at something, you know? And then the good players are like they're at 99 with their stats, which is the cap. Durin, when he gets to level 99, take a minute, think. Where do you think his stats are at level 99? Are they maybe 70, 60, 50, 40, 30? I believe his stats, they're all at like around 35, and they're all like the same as well. He's not good in any area. He's just So, you know, you can use him as an early goalie if you like, but he's terrible later on with Blitzball. And here's the funny thing. This is also the character 
that if you don't recruit him now, he will disappear, die in theory, and you will never be able to get him again. So if you want to get like 100% fire, where you have all Blitzballers at level 99 with all the techs and everything, you got to get Darren right now and go play a ton of Blitzball. We don't care about him though. So yeah. Over here you'll find a sword. It says obtained rusty sword. This is a key item you will find just over here. I haven't done enough time reading the descriptions of key items, but I guess we don't get many. Here's a flower scepter. Seems to have some connection with a hidden Aeon that's described as. Uh, and up here we've got uh, the Aeon Soul. Uh, their descriptions are pretty lame, but uh, rusty sword, an old rusty sword. What the hell is that? Eventually, that will become, uh, with the right ingredients, as my guide says, that will become Auron's final weapon. Uh, like almost like a crusader weapon here. Oren, Oren's much more fitting as a crusader than a warrior monk, but yeah. So yeah, that's what you want to grab from here. A potential blitzball player and um, a sword. And now we will uh, learn some pretty cool stuff about Lulu. I, I really like this bit of the story. Because I cut a bit out of a previous episode when we were in Guado Salam. Where I was saying basically that I feel Waka and Lulu's stories fall off. You know, after, I feel like their stories are really at their peak around Operation Meehan when you talk to Luzu about the, the Chapu thing. Um, and after that, I feel like they just sort of wander with you. And they, you know, Wacker gets more because of, you know, the racism and, you know, coming to terms with this breaking of Yevon. So he's got a bit more. But Lulu, you know, she's been a, a cool voice and whatever, and we like her. But what's she done in the narrative? Not that much. So I said that back in Guado Salam, and then I cut it because I thought, oh, I don't want people to think these end up as useless characters. Um, but now, right here, it's right towards the end of the game, um, Lulu gets, like, this last part of her character uh, plotted out. Pretty creepy. Where are we? The faith is inside. As are the fiends. <gasps> hey, this where? Hmm. Where? What? The summoner I guarded on my first pilgrimage died here. Yuna, let's go. The faith awaits. I wonder if Auron knew about this place. <sighs> okay, right. So they didn't say anything about this. There is an A on here. Completely unrelated to Remiem. And, um... Yeah, if you've ever wondered, like, hold on, let me use this figure. Ah, uh, do you know what's quite fitting? We're coming up to this bit of, big bit of Lulu's story. And she's just started unlocking her final tier of black magic, the fire R, Juz, Guz, sorry. I always pronounce them as Guz. Uh, Titus just got a G as well. Oh, check it out. So there is a, uh, Pilfer Gill available here. That's Riku's path we're very close to. I'm not going to bother with that. Pilfer Gill is like, uh, steel and mug. Except it's stealing gill directly off of enemies instead of items. So there's Pilfer Gill, which is just steal it. And then there's Nab Gill, which is like the mug version, which does damage. But yeah, have you ever wondered why Lulu is more reserved, more quiet, maybe, you know, a bit more responsible and mature? It's because she's more damaged to an extent, you know? Um, she, she failed as a guardian. A friend of hers, a summoner of hers, died. And this is where it happened. So she's been very quiet about it. And uh, so these are the kind of fiends that killed that person, apparently. A fiend that gets no turns whatsoever. This is a magic urn. These appear in some Final Fantasy games. There were great sources of like AP, I think, in 7 or elixirs or something in 7. Um, I remember farming them, at least in that game. But basically, they've got loads of targets on them. You can't conventionally kill these things. You just have to pick a target. So let's pick that one. And he says wrong. So because we got wrong... He's going to come out of his little urn there. And he's going to self-destruct. Now, if that if you have all your squishies out at that point, then that's pretty much game over right there. So you might want to not take the risk. You might want to just flee. Uh, obviously, if at least one person survives, though, the battle's immediately over, and then you can cure out of the battle. So it's not a huge risk. If you get lucky, if you get the right stuff, though, you can get um, uh, good positive items. You can get stuff like, like elixirs hourglasses from them. You'd be surprised how common they are. I tend to find you get them mostly in the early levels of this map, but maybe that's just me. You will have noticed as well in the Calm Lands there were a bunch of fiends we started fighting against. There you go, this one says bingo. So he throws an item at you. 
And yeah, he looks really creepy and weird. So we got a silver hourglass, yay! And you can roll the lottery again. Um, you could throw it at the same place, like it all changes, so we'll, we'll try the middle one, I guess. Um, but yeah, you will have noticed that uh, in the Calm Lands there were a fair few, you know, the Malboros, the Corials, and there was something else as well, wasn't there? That all appear from other Final Fantasy games. Well, this area's got a couple of fiends as well from other games that um, are really iconic to the series. Namely one of them, which is called a Tonberry, which uh, is just going to be awesome to talk about. Um, so, you know, I've tried my luck there. I'll just go with the two and then uh, I'll, uh, I'll run on out. So there we go. Uh, we'll move over here on the right. Basically, this is a, a rather linear little cave that we're going through. Every time there's an offshoot, take it, you'll probably find an item. So in, th in this case, there was a mega elixir there. The way you find fiends here, it varies massively depending on where you're stood. Uh, it took me, when I was capturing 10 of all the monsters on my test file, so long to get everything from this one place just because there were some fiends that weren't even rare It's just I hadn't been like grinding in the right area of the dungeon So these uh, new imps these ones all hitting us with tier 3 black magic there Pretty painful, but whack is ready with some status reels. Let's do it. Let's go for the so wait was petrify getting... Was it getting two hourglasses? Is that what happened? I guess we're going with downs then There you go, three downs. They're, they're, it's actually easy to do those reels as well. Which I guess it's got to be so that it's got utility. Alright, what did that do? That did a lot of damage. And it put all the brakes on people. So that's all the debuffs. I look like what Auron's new overdrive actually. So I'm guessing we've got one where we put just a lot of regular stats on. We've got one that debuffs everyone. Or we've got one that petrifies people. And, you know, probably puts like slow on them. Stuff like that. Uh, let's give some other people a chance. So Lulu, she's got some tier 3 black magic. Allow me. She actually has some uh, dialogue special to this zone as well. I'd love to show you guys. I hope you like it hot. And there you go, there's a fire arga. Lots of damage. And Waku can finish it off for a bit of overdrive charging. It's almost too perfect. Um, but yeah, Yuna's got some as well with some enemies. You can find ghosts and stuff in here. Oh, it's great. Alright, so we'll get rid of that. There's also some great music that plays here. Oh, man. Okay, right. So, we'll just keep moving. Uh, one thing I will say, actually. Um, you'll notice on my menu here. I've got 200,000 gil on me. Make sure you've got around that amount of money. Uh, seriously. And if you want a really nice item as well, you'll want triple that amount. Before coming in here. What's a faith doing in a place like this? Don't ask me. Yeah, this isn't a temple. They say it was stolen from a temple long ago. Huh? With no faith, summoners cannot train. Without training, they cannot call the final Aeon. Without the final Aeon, they cannot defeat Sin. That is why. Cause then the summoner won't die. Mm. That must be what the thief was thinking. Yeah, they all take a pretty positive outlook there. It could be something way more cool, though. Uh, well, I kind of agree with him. Mm -hmm. 